This is The Spotlight, where we turn the spotlight on the arts. I'm Kevin Perry, your host for the show, and thank you for tuning in with us. We're hoping that you will join us for this entire season as we bring you the best in arts entertainment, arts education, and arts performances by the students of St. Lucie Public Schools and our partners. I have an exciting show planned for us this morning, but before we get to our wonderful guests, let me just give you just a couple of opportunities for you to see performances at their best by our students. Of course, this is football season and we just started school. So every Friday night at Lawnwood Stadium, the South County Stadium, or at Port St. Lucie High School Stadium, you have an opportunity to see some of the best marching bands perform in the state of Florida. Yes, I'm biased, but we would love to have you come out and cheer on and support our students. In addition to that, the annual IRSC Four County Honor Choir Festival will be held on September 20th through the 21st in the IRSC McAlpin Fine Arts Center Auditorium, where you can come hear our students perform that night starting at 7 o'clock. We're hoping that you will support these opportunities to support our students, cheer them on, and enjoy just some awesome entertainment. Now, speaking of music, arts, dance, and drama, Please welcome with us today to the spotlight our wonderful school board chair, Debbie Holly, and our superintendent, Ms. Janelle Yost, for an in-depth discussion about why arts are important to the students in St. Lucie County. Ladies, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dr. Perry. Absolutely. I am excited to have you join us. This is the first time that I've actually had the superintendent and the school board chair on the spotlight. But I think as we get started, it is important for our viewing audience to know while we in St. Lucie County have such a major emphasis on arts and arts education. But before we get into our questions and, and our conversation this morning, will you both take just a minute to briefly introduce yourselves to our viewing, viewing audience, just in case they don't know who you are. Thank you so much. I'm Janelle Zarate Yost, and I am the superintendent of schools, have been officially for about a week now. <laughs> so I thank you for the um, uh, opportunity to be a guest this morning. The arts are extremely important in our um, St. Lucie County school system and it's a pleasure to be here this morning. And I'm Debbie Hawley, current chairperson of the St. Lucie County School Board. I was elected in the year 2010 and so I'm serving in my third year now as a board member but have been active in the public school system the entire Oh, last 20, 25 years as my children were going through the public school system as well. So I'm thrilled to be here this morning and excited to have the opportunity to talk about arts in our schools. Once again, ladies, thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. Now, Ms. Holly, I'm going to start with you because mm -hmm. oftentimes we hear about the school board, the school board, the school board. What is the school board? Can you tell us what's the job of a school board member? Sure. School board members are responsible for setting the policy that steers the district in its mission to educate children. We have oversight of all policy as it comes before us to either yay or nay with it. Um, and then we also work directly with the superintendent to create and implement the vision and mission for our schools as we move forward. Now, you told us that you were elected in 2010, and that was elected to the school board. That's correct. But you are a current chair, and how long have you been, been the chair, and what's the process of becoming the chair? Becoming the chair. Um, well, as you know, to be elected to the school board, that's a community-wide um, decision. And then the process of becoming a chairperson, you are elected by your peer co um, board members. So I was elected in November of last year when all boards reorganized at that time and um, was nominated by my fellow board members to serve as chairperson. Okay. And how long will you serve as chair? Typically it's for a year, but there is no set time limit. Um, okay. Now, Ms. Jose, you're our brand new superintendent. Yes, sir. And I heard both of you ladies say that you have been involved in education. Tell us, what did you do before you became superintendent <laughs> in education? Certainly. Um, I've assumed many roles within St. Lucie County Schools. I've had the pleasure of working within the district. This is my 39th year. 
and it's been a fabulous career. I began as a teacher working with our students with disabilities as well as serving in administrative roles, principal at Dan McCarty Middle School, Fairlawn Elementary, Dale Casson's Exceptional Center, Means Court Center, um, and I've also had the opportunity of working at the l district level as the assistant to the director of exceptional education. So I've been provided uh, many opportunities within the district to serve our, our students of, of the area. And Ms. Holly, you also mentioned that you had been involved even before you became uh, a board member. Tell us about that involvement. Well, my background is in mental health counseling, and I did a substantial amount of time in our schools with our students um, teaching social skills curriculum, grief counseling, um, a lot of groups to work with children that were going through various things in their life, whether it's, you know, uh, adjusting to school or some impact in their family that they were experiencing. So I utilized my talent there on a voluntary basis to, to work with our students, mainly at our elementary schools, but um, oh, several times over the years with our middle school and high schoolers as well. High schoolers especially making the transition to leave high school and go to college and leave their families and that type of thing. And frequently parents were involved as well with that. And if I'm not mistaken, you also have served on and chaired our district advisory council that's correct and your involvement there Yeah, the district advisory council is a group of people made up of an individual from each of our schools and we meet once a month to talk about various issues that either the school board has asked the district advisory to um, give a recommendation on or members of the DAC will ask school board members you know what's going on here how can we help there that type of thing and I served on it, this is probably my 15th year um, with the district advisory. I chaired it for nine years prior to being elected to the school board. But it's a fabulous venue for people of all schools to be together at one time and talk about the areas of concern and the areas of joy that we experience in the school district. Ladies, while we're still giving some background, I know the District Advisory Council is a wonderful opportunity for our parents, for our community members, partners to be involved uh, uh, in the process of education. Can either one of you tell us any additional opportunities that our community members may have because we want them to know that we value their input and their information? Many of our community members can volunteer um, at each school. There are school volunteers always needed within our schools. They could either remain on campus and work individually with students through perhaps some tutorial support services. They could also assist teachers by preparing for the lessons as well as maybe even taking things home to assist the teacher in the preparation of the day's activities. We always have parent involvement activities. We like all of our parents to become involved to some degree, even as just to um, continue communicating with the teacher, but any activity at the school, I know that our students enjoy the representation of our families there. And many times it's extended family members. It might be mm -hmm. grandma, grandpa, any of the other family members, or even folks within their neighborhood who might come out perhaps for a concert at the school. I know Ms. Holly mentioned, the, talked about the District Advisory Council, and of course we've traditionally had PTOs and, and, and boost organizations, but Ms. Jost, we also have a School Advisory Council that's similar to? That is accurate, and uh, many of the individuals serving on the District Advisory Council are also representatives at their school level. So they communicate, they're the liaison between the school and the district. Our School Advisory Council is open to all um, community members as well as to families. They typically have a more formal membership. However, it is an open meeting and parents and community are welcome to attend meetings at any time. Those schedules are available through the main office of each school or on their website. And the really interesting thing about school advisory councils is that it must be made up of a majority of parents and or community members. So it really is an opportunity for our community members and parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, to be part of their students' school life. I, 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 think, I think that information is very important because we want our community members to know, our parents, to know that there are opportunities for them to be involved and we value and want their, their, their involvement. On a much larger scale, scale, Dr. Perry, just recently, in our search for a new superintendent. Mm -hmm. We had tremendous community involvement 
from folks that served on school advisory councils, the district advisory council. Each of those were integral in the, the whole process of going through finding our, our new superintendent. And I, I was glad to see that happen because, as I said, there are many opportunities and we want to continue to bring our community members in to partner with us. Uh, it, it goes back to that village. Mm -hmm. and it goes back to the village as we continue to do the wonderful things for our school district. It mm -hmm. is their ship. Our Absolutely. school district is their yeah. ship. Um, and we want to make it the best ship that it could possibly be. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to move toward arts education in our discussion. Good. Now, Ms. Holly, the school board has verbally stated for years that they support the arts mm -hmm. and arts education in our district. Why is that so important to our school board? Well, all of the research shows that arts integrated into the curriculum, helps children achieve at higher levels, gives them a greater sense of comfort with the subject area that they are working in, brings out all of their creativity and expressiveness in fashions that they may not have an opportunity to express in other venues. Um, school has to be about more than just reading and writing and the creativity process is what stimulates all the brain activity and moves students forward in their academic life. Well, and either one of you can take this question. In the wake of budget cuts, and we all know that we had a menu of items that could possibly be cuts for the school district as we were trying to save some 15 to $17 million so that we could meet our expenses for the year. Um, generally, in the wake of budget cuts, the arts mm -hmm. are those things on the peripheral of, of our core curriculum, and they're generally the first thing that would be cut. But that was not so in St. Lucie County. As a matter of fact, school board members decided that even in losing a resource teacher, mm -hmm. it would not be in the area of the arts. What does that mean for arts and arts education in St. Lucie Public Schools? I think it affirms the fact that we value arts education within the district. It does support the other content areas and it promotes student performance. We did look at many areas for our budget um, savings and the cuts that were needed. We made every effort to avoid um, huge impacts upon the arts. We know that our students many times can excel in the academic areas through their connection to the arts. And we see students who are involved in any aspect of the arts, the music, for example. There are strong connectors to um, spatial reasoning. So there are connections to the academics, and we know that our school board values the benefits of arts education and its connection to student performance. Ms. Holly, you mm -hmm. mentioned to us earlier that you have a counseling background. Yes. How are the arts used in counseling or in therapy? Well, actually, it, it becomes um, a rather fun part of the therapy process. Most of my clients are youngsters, elementary to middle school age. And frequently, if they've experienced a trauma in their life, they don't really have the, the words to articulate that trauma. So I use one of the tools in my toolbox is um, various forms of art therapy, whether it be drawing, whether it be crafting with clay, um, even music. We'll, I will frequently have um, the children write a song. And it's about what's inside them. That's the toughest part for children to express. They know there's something happening. The, the feelings are deep and intense, but they don't know how to articulate it with words. So you can put a piece of paper in front of them and markers or crayons or a paintbrush and just let them express what those feelings are. And there, ha there has to be no, no right or wrong to it. It's what is inside them and how they project it onto that piece of paper or onto that piece of clay that they sculpt or the music that they choose to have on in the background as they're doing the, the various forms of therapy. And so much can be gleaned from the information that they present and they never even have to utter a word as part of the process whether it, it works fabulously with children with learning disabilities because sometimes they're not an auditory learner, but an expressive learner. So it's, um, it really is fascinating to watch and to glean from what comes out of what's deep within them. And they don't ever have to use the verbal word. Journaling is another activity. Uh, I think we'll have some great authors in the future just from their ability to put in print, in word, 
the feelings that they're having and the, the real trauma that they, they may be experiencing. It's also a great stress reliever for folks, adults as well. I'll, I'll use adults frequently, um, and it, it's, it has a calming effect when they can pick a, a form of music that they like to listen to or bring an instrument that they just like to play, and it, it, it's a fabulous stress reliever. And our students have had the opportunity to um, experience art and music therapy, or specifically our students with disabilities, throughout the years, probably about 20 years now, and that has, we've seen a difference in the growth of the social and emotional development of our students through the exposure mm -hmm. to the arts, Absolutely. and so it truly um, enhances our, our students and their lives. Mm -hmm. So when we look at the arts uh, as part of counseling or therapy, it really becomes a catalyst or the precursor to helping expressing themselves, their emotions, their feelings, and therefore lead to healing exactly. or lead to development. Correct. Correct? Yes, sir. The arts are an expressive process. and it, Art therapy is just another form of expression, but it does integrate items that they can utilize in their normal everyday life as well as their school life. Maybe both of you want to answer this next question for you. Um, we, uh, we believe that we must have a vision because the visions help us move forward mm -hmm. uh, to get us from, from now to, to the future. So what, in your role, what would be your vision or, or your expectation for arts education in St. Lucie County? Vision or expectations? I'll, I believe that our vision for arts education must support the vision and the mission for St. Lucie County Schools. And our vision is to promote student achievement. And that could be accomplished through the arts, be it dance, drama, music, orchestra. And so we would expect of our music educators to make sure that there are ongoing daily connections to student performance. Uh, it could be discipline, it could be focus, it could be study habits. Not always musically um, connected in terms of um, a more formal process, but there are many advantages to exposure to the arts that benefit and enhance our lives overall. And so I would expect our um, arts education uh, faculty, staff, teachers throughout the district to connect with student performance. And, and to connect to that, that vision which talks about our students graduating from safe and caring schools. Absolutely. With the desire. With this, and the skill. Mm -hmm for either to be career ready or college ready. So It's interesting that we're having this conversation this morning because as you know, Dr. Perry, you were there last night, but we had the inaugural meeting of the task force looking at Fort Pierce Magnet School of the Arts and how we can get more community involvement with that school. And we had a tremendous um, showing last night of community folks that really want to be part of the arts in our students' lives. And so working with our community partners as well, whether it be the Sunrise Theater or the Jazz Society, Bacchus Museum, all of those areas um, are interested in being part of the students' everyday life and mentoring and perhaps having an artist in residence at the school and that kind of thing. So, But then again, as a school board and as a district, we have the responsibility too to provide the resources that these students and teachers are going to need to fully implement mm -hmm. the arts at all levels. Well-rounded experiences. Yes. Mm -hmm. Both of you kind of briefly mentioned the word research when we first started our mm -hmm. conversation. Tell us what, what research tells you about students' involvement in the arts. It's actually quite a bit of research out there that has been um, addressed over the years. For example, dance. We know that it can build self-confidence and persistence in students. We know that drama can certainly help us develop stories. So that's a connection to literacy, the way they can um, develop characters and the plot. So there are many connections to music, um, to instrumental instruction. There is a connection to SAT scores and the enhancement of those scores through students who play an instrument of some kind. So the research is demonstrating that there is a positive impact on student achievement and the development of our students socially as well as emotionally. One of the favorite uh, pieces of research that I've come across most recently talks about students that are read to, talked to, are sung to, are better prepared to start school 
Right. That'd be and, true. And yeah. how many elementary yeah. teachers, whether you're a music teacher or not, use movement and music within their classrooms for many of their activities. Many of our students learn their multiplication facts mm -hmm. through, um, through song. Mm -hmm. um, so there are many opportunities for our teachers, whether you're truly a music instructor mm -hmm. of some sort, arts educator, or um, an educator within a content area, mm -hmm. and they utilize strategies from the arts to enhance and engage students in their lessons. We were just having that conversation on last evening when we were talking about arts and arts education at Fort Pierce Magnet School of the Arts because the basic premise is that, uh, especially in primary grades, there's a lot of doodling, mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. that's art, that's drawing, there's, there's a lot of movement, that's mm -hmm. dance, there's a lot of singing, that's m music, there's a lot of pretending, that's drama. So we use all of those strategies to help students develop in the academics uh, as we start their career, so they're great instructional tools that can continue to be used. Huh. If the arts are so important, how do they enhance schools, but more so, how do they enhance our community as a whole? I think that's an excellent question. We are, we reside on the Treasure Coast where we have many opportunities to involve our students, not only at school, but in our community arts uh, programs. You've got um, the Riverside Theater, you've got Sunrise Theater, Lyric Theater, so there's a wide range of opportunities right here in our backyard. We have drama productions at Port St. Lucie High School that all of our community members are generally eager to purchase tickets and they're sold out well before mm -hmm. each performance. So that's a connection, um, some opportunities within our schools as well as within our community. And I believe that there are art classes available either for for instrumental development in the downtown area. You have um, Art Mundo, so that students can not only view arts, but have an opportunity to work with our artists in the area. Some of our schools bring artists um, of all kinds, musicians, um, uh, artists, visual arts, into uh, the, the schools and our classrooms from time to time. Because we know, all know it's expensive to um, secure a bus and travel to a location. And so we truly enjoy having our local artists come into our schools and uh, connect with our students. Ladies, as I listen to you speak this morning, you speak with such energy, such passion. Uh, you have such a major affinity for the arts. Do any one of you have an arts background? I don't, other than thoroughly appreciating all forms of art. Mrs. Jones? I've been exposed to the arts. I was fortunate to um, grow up in a family that appreciated the arts, and I began dance at age three where my grandmother believed that um, young ladies would develop um, poise, grace, and balance. And I came to love dance and even continue through Zumba at this time <laughs> <laughs> to enjoy dance. Um, but also my mother felt it was very important to expose us to the arts and uh, having siblings, she would take each one of us individually to the theater. So it was our special mm -hmm. evening to connect with mom. And that's a great idea for any parent parent as they um, maybe consider some ideas to bond with their children to mm -hmm. to find some time with each individual child mm -hmm. within the household. Idea. Well ladies, a little birdie told me that both of you have some serious dance moves. <laughs> so let's take a look at some footage and we'll talk about <laughs> it on the other end. And you can never give up, you can reach your goals, just talk to your soul and say.
that was the flash mob from the beginning of the school year. Can you, ladies, and both of you participated, so can you tell us about that Absolutely. flash mob? Absolutely. <laughs> As we began the school year, um, there were thoughts this summer about how could we engage all of our educators in an activity to kick off the year that would be fun, engaging, as well as perf um, perhaps connect or reconnect them to the vision, mission, and beliefs within the district. And a friend of mine suggested that perhaps we do a step routine or some kind of wrap, and then it kind of morphed into the possibility of including a flash mob into the presentation. That would certainly, it was the hope, it would certainly add some fun and excitement into the message. And so we were fortunate to um, work with the media services department so that there was a connection to every location within St. Lucie County that was having professional development throughout the district because there wasn't a time in our schedule where we could bring everyone together, much less a location where everyone could be accommodated. And so we had an opportunity to go live from Dan McCarty and then video stream into all of our um, locations, including the Port St. Lucie Community Center and other locations where our teachers were engaged in professional development or at their schools. So we inducted our teachers and, re and faculty staff, as well as support staff, to the vision, mission, and beliefs. Vision, mission, and beliefs that have been in existence for approximately 10 years, but as you review them and revisit them, they're just as pertinent today as they were 10 years ago. So it was a fun day to then infuse the flash mob choreographed by our own Dr. Kevin Perry <laughs> well, it, it, into it's, that it's, activity. It's been a lot of fun, and I continue to hear rave reviews about the energy and excitement. Now, as we come to our final question for you, Ms. Holly, as school board chair, what would you say to, impair, to a parent to encourage them to ensure that their child participated in the arts? Well, that's really um, an excellent question and one that I have addressed with many parents um, in, in this journey, especially with Fort, Fort Pierce Magnet School of the Arts. How can you see viable returns from integrating your child into a school that implements the arts at all levels? And when we begin to talk about the things like drawing, doodling, as you mentioned with our pre-kindergartners, all of those areas that parents see their children doing at home and having the opportunity to take it one step further, to actually integrate it into their educational background. Because you never know down the road what future superstar we may have, um, whether it be a vocalist or a pianist or a sculptor, uh, an artist of whatever form. And frequently parents don't put the importance on those activities, but when they see that it's integrated into their child's educational life, they, they have a, a better connection then. So just pay attention to what your children are doing, how they draw, what, they, what instruments they pay attention to, what music they want to listen to on the radio. All of those give great insight to, to your children and to the, to the road that they want to be on. So don't, don't ever shy away from it. As I said, I didn't have a lot of background in the arts, but I have a huge appreciation for them and want to do all of it. Sometimes the body just doesn't react like it should, as the flash mob is a perfect example of. Um, <laughs> and you performed but, well, Miss Holly. But the, the fun and the that it generated and the togetherness, being with a crowd like that and the enthusiasm, don't, don't ever deny a child that opportunity to be part of something like that. Well, ladies, thank you for joining us for our, our first show for the 2013-14 school year here on The Spotlight, where we turn the spotlight on the arts. And we thank you for tuning in, and we look forward to having you join us for the entire season. Thank you.